Did you know that the average office worker is interrupted every three minutes? And it takes an average of 23 minutes to refocus. So if you were wondering why your tasks are taking so long to complete or why you're not being very productive, well, this might be why. And being productive is super important for property managers with huge workloads and even bigger responsibilities. And yet it's one thing that is rarely taught or addressed in modern property management offices. Hello there and welcome to the Property Management Podcast. I'm your host, Kylie Walker, or as many of you might know me as That Property Mum. Now, can I ask a quick favour before we dive into today's epic episode? We all know how important reviews are for businesses these days, and mine is no different. If you could spare just a minute to rate, follow and review, that would mean the world to me. In fact, what would get me even more excited would be if you took a screenshot of the podcast and share it to your social stories and tag me in it. This year has been all about building new connections and I would love you to be part of mine. Now, when you think of productivity, what do you think? For me, it's being focused to get through my to-do list with minimal distractions. While productivity by definition is a measure of how efficiently a person completes a task. And employee or team productivity plays a crucial role in the overall success of any company. Now, latest research on pro productivity reveals some pretty staggering statistics. So as I mentioned in the uh, intro, the average employee will be distracted every three minutes. And it takes 23 minutes to re focus back on the original task. The average office worker is productive for less than three hours a day. And only 7% of workers consider themselves productive during official office work hours. And happiness in the workplace has been shown to boost productivity by 12%. Now, a lack of productivity in the workplace leads to a number of issues for individuals and businesses, including elevating stress levels, it also deflates morale and increases conflict, as well as causing a lack of business growth, poor customer service and reduces income. Now, if your business is struggling with productivity, never fear. I have some help here for you. My guest today is here to talk you through some really simple, actionable ways to help you get up and running more efficiently and productively. Now, Leah Self, or the Productivity Queen, as she is known by her clients and audience, is what is called a productivity assistant. And she helps your business to grow and expand by opening you up to automating and streamlining your business with systems and processes. She'll help you stop wasting time on the tasks that take you away from what you do best and free you up to be able to focus on important tasks, like, for example, customer service. In our conversation, she talks about her five steps for getting your week organized, how to stop being a slave to your emails, yes, please, and how to set boundaries to create that work-life integration we are all craving. Now, you won't want to miss this, so let's dive on in. Thank you so much for joining me on the Property Management Podcast. Now, before we dive in, can you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and how you got started doing what you do now? Of course, I would love to. So I am Leah, uh, your resident productivity queen. Um, and what I generally do on a day-to-day -day basis is I help women in service-based industries to refine their processes, implement effective systems and create automation um, to help them grow an efficient and sustainable business. So essentially, when you break it all down, I basically help women in business to get stuff done, if we want to put it bluntly like that. So nice and easy, nice and simple. Um, the reason I got started in my business was I was actually one of the very unfortunate few that was made redundant during COVID. I was working previously in the events 
conferencing and travel world, which, as you could all imagine, moving into COVID wasn't going to go anywhere um, too quickly. And I was very realistic about um, what potentially was going to happen over the next couple of years. So I knew that I had to make a pivot, love that word, um, into what was potentially going to help me further down the track. So I had started out as a virtual assistant and working with a couple of friends, uh, neighbours, helping them out with their admin, just to kind of get an idea of if that's something that I wanted to do long term. I loved helping people think a little differently, think outside the box and create strategies that they may not have thought of. Um, and that is where the Productivity Queen was born. Yes. You sound like a fairy godmother for business owners. <laughs> I think sometimes people do um, associate me with like that magic wand touch of like, oh, I just come in and fix everything. Uh, But to me, it was more about educating. So I never really come into working with a client or into a business and say, everything you're doing is wrong. We need to overhaul everything. I like to come in and more in an awareness piece. So what are you currently doing? What are you hoping to achieve with the business? And then find out what that disconnect is and figure out how we can then use what you're currently doing and refine it and simplify it so that you're spending more time on the doing instead of more time on the thinking about doing is basically where I like to kind of fit into that little realm. Oh my goodness. I am um, absolutely loving that. So a lot of my audience is works in the property management. There's a lot of business owners, property managers, and we obviously look after our clients biggest, well, one of their biggest assets, obviously property, um, which can be quite stressful. Um, We have a lot of admin and compliance work. We have uh, a lot of us are drowning in our inboxes. Mm -hmm. And we also have a lot of conflict and disputes and it can get pretty overwhelming um, with everything that we've got to get through in a day or a week. So maybe let's start at the beginning and give us some of your best productivity hacks where we could get started if we were feeling really overwhelmed right now. Yeah, definitely. And I think when it comes to your inbox, there's that big transition between having an inbox that's overflowing and then everyone goes, just go inbox zero, just clear everything at the end of the day and everything will be fine. And I think I, like I personally have an issue with that because the way that I work is that if it's in my inbox, it needs to be actioned. And generally that means that sometimes that action list gets quite long. Um, And then you start looking at it and you're like, how am I going to get everything done? How am I going to make everything work? The easiest thing that I teach a lot of my clients to do is start with the things that are only going to take two to three minutes to action, especially if it's in your inbox. So have a look at your inbox. Try to tackle about 10 to 20 in emails a day. Now, if your inbox is getting into the hundreds and the thousands, we may have to have a different conversation about how you can reorganize it. But if you're finding that the emails that are coming into your inbox that can be easily actioned, um, I would just do it take the two to three minutes and just action it, get it off your plate. The more you procrastinate about doing it, the longer it sits there and the bigger the problem. So it's almost about going, having a quick read through, skim through. Is there anything that I can do in this 15 minute time between finishing up with this client call and going to meet with a client? Is there something that I can tackle in this 15 minutes? Breaking that down and going, cool, I reckon I could get through four or five emails quickly get them done and hand it over. So it's not about trying to tackle everything at once. It's about trying to break it down into more manageable chunks. So that may also look at um, creating times throughout your day that you dedicate looking at your calendar. So whether, uh, sorry, your inbox. So whether that's 9.30 in the morning after you kind of do your morning debrief, it might be as you come back from lunch and then it could be just as you have your afternoon tea or coffee um, before you end the day. So whatever's going to work best for you, just to again break down those manageable chunks is probably the best way. Another way to get really clear on how your week looks and how you integrate a more seamless flow, and I educate um, some of my clients on this as well, is doing what I call Sunday setup for success. So I guarantee you that at any point, anybody has a good half an hour to 45 minutes on a Sunday where they're aimlessly scrolling through TikTok or through Instagram reels and just generally wasting time. Um, Or it could be watching the latest episode of Maths, if that's still around. I can't stand that show, but I'm sure someone out there watches it. (laughs) And then what I decide to tell people to do is I want you to, and there's five steps to it, and it should only take you half an hour to 45 minutes. 
The first thing I want you to do is I want you to look forward to your week and brain dump everything, everything that you possibly need to do for the business, for yourself personally, for the kids, for your husband, um, any commitments you have with family and friends, dinners, lunches, brunches, soccer appointments, all those kinds of things, right? Now, once you've done that, I want you to allocate the time next to it that it's going to actually take to complete each of those. Now, when we say, for example, my son does touch football on a Monday night, the game itself only goes for about 25, 30 minutes, but it takes me a good 15 minutes to get there. We've got to be there about 10 minutes before. We normally hang around for about 10 minutes because he wants to hang with the boys. And then it takes me another 15 minutes to get home. So realistically, that 20 minute, half an hour game has now turned into about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. So instead of me saying to myself, I'm going to allocate 25 minutes to half an hour for the game, I need to allocate my actual time, travel, all that consideration. Once you've allocated all the time to your task, and I know that may sound a bit daunting, but once you've allocated the time and then you allocate when those bits and pieces are going to be due. So Monday night is footy. Um, every Thursday I know I have a client meeting so that goes in there. You can then start getting a much clearer picture of exactly what your week looks like and how you actually want to f- have that flow to your week. And you can then start reassessing whether things are taking too much time, whether you're spending too much time on things. So it's about just being a little bit more aware of what your week looks like and how you can tackle everything. Beautiful. So that was, was that five steps in there? So I think we covered off. Yeah. So brain dump is the first one. Assigning the times is the second one. Assigning your due dates is the third. Then kind of laying it out in the week, what it actually visually looks like. And that could be a weekly planner, like a paper version. And it could be in your Google or Outlook calendar. And then the fifth one is actually assessing it to see if it's too much or if it's the flow that you're actually after. So being a little bit more high level visual of what your week looks like. What about some advice for us? Because property managers spend a lot of time in and out of office, going to viewings, going to client appointments. Um, do you have some advice on maybe structuring a calendar, how to how to manage a calendar during the week? Yeah, definitely. I love time blocking. Time blocking is my number one thing to do. Um, And the easiest way to do that, and sometimes it might be a little bit difficult in an industry that might be a little bit more ad hoc in regards to meetings and going to property viewings and things like that. But I guess it comes down to recreating those boundaries. If you decide that it's too complicated to have certain things happen at a certain time, so certain client meetings or certain property viewings, I would say to reassess your boundaries reassess what is actually important where things need to be blocked in. So I don't know, for example, my real estate, they only do viewings, like property management viewings on certain days. So it's they happen on certain days of the week through certain times of the day. Um, makes it easy for them when they're booking them in. It also makes it easier for them when they've got other things that they actually need to work on. So it's all about going, okay, well, if I have all of these things that need to take place throughout the entire week, I need to be held responsible for when those actually happen. So I'm going to create that boundary that if you want to book an appointment in with me, it has to be done within these times. If I need to go out and view a property, I can only do it between these times. It may take a little bit of time to get used to, especially if you're used to a bit more of a flow and you're a bit more reactive to it. But creating that structure and and those boundaries around when things occur, one, it almost makes your week predictable to a certain extent. You know when things are going to be available, when things are going to be happening. Um, And it also means that when you're waking up, you're not like, oh, my gosh, what have I got happening today? Am I doing viewings? Am I taking client meetings? Like you kind of know, cool, well, on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they're the only days that I do property viewings. So when I wake up, I should expect that I will have a couple of property viewings today. If I don't, then I can use that time more effectively to follow up on the emails that are banking up in the inbox, do any lead chasing. Like, So you can then use that time more effectively when it's not already allocated. I think that's a really great point that you make there is that it, we are responsible for it and we mm-hmm. get to set our own boundaries. Obviously, 100%. if you've got a boss, sometimes they might tell you that, you know, you've only got a car available these days or these times. But at the end of the day, it's up to us to take responsibility for that. And I think mm-hmm. that's a big thing. And I've only learned this, I think, in the last couple of years myself that it's up to us to set the week that we want to to work. And I think if COVID's taught us anything as well, is that we don't have to work the nine to five. We can 
work from if, if you've got things to do at home and your your home life's falling apart you know can you have that if you've got your own business of course you can but if you've got to have that conversation with your boss you know I'm, I'm you know I'm struggling at home I need to have a couple of days working from home so I can get on top of things uh we've got that flexibility now which I think um is is really great yeah and I totally agree with you we work in such a a world these days where communication, deliverables, the way we engage, the way we interact, the way we deliver our service, and in most cases as well, the way we deliver products can be done online, can be done virtually. So there really isn't a need to feel like you need to be attached to your desk from Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. And I think especially in an industry where it, in property where there's a lot of outward you know, there's a lot of output, there's a lot of going to appointments, there's a lot of going to viewings, there's a lot of managing things that are outside of your office. I think it also comes down to a point where having a conversation with your boss and making them realise sometimes that that outward, that, you know, that output that you're doing where things are always constantly on the outside of the business, especially if it's a brick and mortar business, means that you should have the flexibility of going, okay, well, if I'm going to go to this particular suburb and I have two or three viewings, is there an opportunity for me to then work in between that at a cafe or is it close to home and I can duck home and do that work? So it's it's almost about using that time more effectively. If it's going to take you 20 minutes to get to your viewing and then 20 minutes to come back to then an hour later do a similar, you know, transit time, is there any way that you can combine that and use those pockets of time more effectively? And I think that's where some some people have already started thinking that way, but I think sometimes people need to at least nudge that conversation in the right direction. Oh, I totally agree with you, and I think it's it's all yeah, it's all about working smarter, not harder. And I know that's very yeah. cliche, <laughs> but it yeah. is. But we hear that all the time. But sometimes we mm. don't actually look at the practicalities of our days and our lives. And I just want to recap on a couple of things because you've highlighted a couple of amazing um, points there, uh, which is obviously don't be chained to our inboxes. The second thing is I love the mind dump. I actually do that. Mm. Uh, and I, yeah, I've got like about four pages worth of mind dump at the moment. Perfect. So I, yeah, and I was feeling so overwhelmed before I did that mind dump and my to-do lists are crazy, but anyway, I'm ticking them off slowly each day. <laughs> Um, so that's that's really valuable ad, advice, and also having boundaries around your time management and how you want to, your weeks to look. Can you maybe talk about some of the practicalities of, say, you went into a real estate business and how you could help them? Some of the the tasks that you can help, because I guess you are essentially like a VA, a, a, a virtual assistant as well um, as yep. the pro- productivity queen. Yeah, definitely. I think the biggest thing that I start with is what um, the service deliverability looks like. So whatever service you are offering, how do you actually deliver that? And I want you to start thinking about if this is how I have to deliver it, what are the steps that I need to do in order to make that happen? And it always comes back to doing the stuff that makes you money, right? So having a look at how you structure your day and how you structure your day most effectively and then looking at the systems that you're currently using to make sure that that actually fits in with how you want to structure your day. If you are using multiple systems, you're switching between platforms and notebooks and post-it notes, all those little bits of time, all those tiny pockets of time are taking up time and space, especially mental clarity, to actually complete something and be completely honed in on exactly how that's going to be delivered to your clients. So for me, it comes down to an awareness piece. I come in and I want people to be aware of what they think that they're delivering and then how they're actually delivering it. And if there is a disconnect there, figuring out how we can refine what they're currently doing to make sure that that connection is much more stable um, and allowing them to be a lot clearer on what that outcome is. And I think the biggest difference is with some business owners, and I was similar in this similar situation, we create this idea of how we think our customer experience wants to be. And then we build our business to make sure that that is the customer experience that we're delivering. The problem is a lot of people do that and then they set and forget. So they're not constantly reviewing, is that working? Is that growing with the business? Is that growing with our audience? Is it actually making an impact? Are we delivering on what we say we're going to be delivering on? So again, that awareness piece, what are we currently doing? Where do we want the business to be? And seeing where those gaps are in between. 
I think that's um, a really valuable service, especially in property management. We are at the, the core of our business is customer service. So, totally. uh, so you could so you, so you um, uh, prioritize customer service as part of what you do. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, because at the end of the day, without customers and without repeat clients or generating new clients, um, you don't have an income. There's there's un- like you can go out and manage, uh, you know, do property viewings until the house comes home. But if you're not actually getting people into those properties, if you're not actually getting owners to become part of your property property portfolio, then you have nothing to work with. So in order to refine and perfect what you sell, you need to almost go completely back and figure out exactly how do you want the customer to move through that journey? What does that customer experience look like? Because until you figure that out, you're not going to have a rinse and repeat situation. You're going to be constantly figuring out why you've got a retention problem, why you're finding it hard to convert leads because you're not 100% sure on exactly what that customer experience looks like and how you can do it in the most impactful way. Fantastic. I think a lot of people are going to uh, really be attracted to that offer that you've got there. Um, Perfect. Now, I really love personal development. And so can you share a tool, resource, book or podcast um, yes. <laughs> that can help us be more productive? Yeah, less definitely. Stressed. And I think this, yeah, less stress. And I think this comes back to um, what I was talking about previously with understanding your customer experience. I love the book um, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. And the reason I start with that Um, and I bring it up a lot with um, some of the people that I speak with, is that in order to figure out the how, you need to understand your why. So figure out what your why is, why are customers coming to you, why are you delivering that service, why are you offering that customer experience. Once you know your why, then you can figure out your how. You can't build something if you don't know what you're building, and it's as simple as that. So going back, and I'm not talking all this woo-woo stuff, you know, vision boards and all that kind of stuff. Start with why. Why did you start your business? Why are you in, you know, the industry that you're in? Why are you delivering? Figuring out why it is that you do what you do and then you can figure out how you're going to deliver it because those two connect so well together. And that makes the productivity a lot easier at the end of the day as well. Totally. Once once you're working towards that bigger picture. Um, so that's brilliant advice. Thank you. I, I love Simon Sinek's books, so yes. it's fantastic. <laughs> um, so how can our audience connect further with you? Definitely. So the best place to find me would be on Instagram. So uh, my handle is the dot productivity queen. Um, I put everything up there. Um, I probably should be on more places. My my marketing VA, VA would probably hate me for that, but um, that was probably the best place to find me at the moment. Fantastic. I will share some links in the show notes. Um, Thank you so much for joining me on this episode. I am super grateful for this conversation. No, thank you, Carly. It has been super fun. Thank you so much. If you love the Property Management Podcast, you've got to check out the PM Collective, hosted by my friend, Ashley Goodchild. She discusses things like how to have awkward conversations about pay rises, um, yes please, how to raise the bar in property management and why so many people just seem to fall into the industry. You've got to love stories like that. She'll leave you with great advice, actionable steps to take and let you know that you're not alone in any of the challenges that you face. So be sure to check out the PM Collective wherever you get your podcasts.